proceeding to order. First order of business is the minutes, uh, which were sent out uh, by email a while ago. Uh, do I have any corrections? Okay, well, Peter, uh, I think there's one thing under Article 45, going down the left-hand side to the line just above Tosti, where it says requests uh, 15450. Yeah. Uh, at the 2 1 meeting, APA requested 1500. I think they requested 15,000. Thank you. Okay, are there any other corrections? Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Okay. Uh, any further discussion on the minutes? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, okay, Liz, am I the only one who got a minute man or did everybody? That just came in the mail. With, with the, um, I don't know, they left it before me for the. Yeah. Okay, but it was just one. Yeah. Okay, so um, on our calendar next Monday, Minuteman will be in at 745. Uh, so they emailed out all of the uh, budgets to you. Um, you know, please review them and uh, print out whatever you desire for the meeting. Okay. Clarissa, do you have your all your people here? Um, we were told 7:45, so they'll be here. They'll sort of. I, we can start. Absolutely. Okay. Tell you what. Why don't you do scenic byways? First? Scenic byways. Okay. Um, the scenic byway, this has nothing to do with community preservation committee. There is a scenic byway committee that uh, used to consist of the economic development director, and we now have Allie Carter, who is just doing a terrific job, and Angela Oluski, excuse, who can't come to many meetings, which is too bad and um, Howard Winkler, who's just retired from the committee. We um, represent Arlington. We're one of the four um, towns of the Scenic Byway. And the Scenic Byway, <coughs> when we started working on it, I guess about seven years ago, was a federal designation for a Scenic Byway. There's seven of them in Western Massachusetts. There's one up in Essex. Um, you've probably seen the brown signs up there. And a scenic byway is uh, a way of getting federal money eventually. We have gotten state money to start this. And we are now um, in a branding campaign. And you can tell, this is, I'll send these around. We have a brand new printer at work. And you can tell how um, really good at it I am. <laughs> but this is what it's supposed to look like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I think that's much better. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm supposed to speak into the microphone. Uh, this is what we did in the last several years for the contributions that the town put towards it. We are now in the process of working on a website, which will again have more of the branding that we worked on before. The, the website itself, and I've got, for anybody that's interested, we've got the beginning of the content, but it's gonna be talking about the historic resources in all four um, towns, Arlington, Lexington, Concord, and Lincoln, and the National Park. But it's also gonna be talking, from our point of view, something very important, which is where, where you should eat, where you should stay, where you should go to the theater, and where you should shop. And that's something that, again, we're working with a graphic designer, website designer on. Um, the request that I think Adam Chaplain put through the ATED group is for $2,000 for next year. Uh, Lexington will also be putting that amount of money th through. The National Park Service doesn't know yet because they're being told they're going to be cut by 10%. In the past, they've put about $500 a year towards the work that we're doing. Um, so the $2,000 is to continue the work, to start manufacturing some of the signs. Honestly, um, the signs need to go be much more um, shown throughout of Arlington. 
but um, since I've sort of been the only active member and I have a lot of other things on my plate, I'm hoping to give it to Allie Carter. But you will see in the next year some of these signs popping up in Lexington along the bikeway, sort of talking about where the scenic byway is. The scenic byway is Massachusetts Avenue, so it goes all the way out to the park. And it's got all four um, towns most historic resources along the way. So any questions? I'm curious on, on why you call it a byway instead of a highway. Um, that's the way that's the way the program started. And it, it's, it's a national program and they're called byways all over the country. Thank you. So where does it start? Does it's, it start by coming up Medford Street or does it start on Mass Ave at the yes. Cambridge border? Yes, at Mass Avenue at the Cambridge border. And goes all along um, Massachusetts Avenue with a detour. It can take a detour along Paul Revere Road. Um, you know, there are other detours in other places, but it's the, the route of Paul Revere, which is why he's shown so prominently in this. Okay, so Mass Ave <coughs> goes through Arlington, goes through Lexington, and then comes down on 2A, right, right across from Minutemen. Correct. Okay, and then does it continue out 2A? Yeah, it continues out 2A. And the National Park Service has been very active, actively involved in um, working with us. They're, they're part of the group that we meet, that meets every month, as is MassDOT, so that the signs that are being done will meet um, the standard MassDOT requirements. And they won't be very expensive, but they'll um, be eye-catching. Any questions, Troy? Uh, of course, uh, in Lexington, uh, by the uh, monument there, we know where the road and they have a little information booth. And they have docents there, I think. I think that's what you call them. Right. Like people who give a little speech about mm -hmm. the Minuteman statue, whatever. <coughs> uh, do we have something like that planned for, say, for the Jason Russell House? Or well, I could turn to these gentlemen are from the Jason Russell House. We're, think, we're thinking about it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a, there's a, in my opinion, there is a bigger, richer, story to be told about Arlington's yeah. history, particularly the Revolutionary War right. and its connection on the Battle Road all, all the way out to Old North Bridge beyond. And uh, we're, we're thinking about this and we're, we're, uh, we're, 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 uh, we're looking for ways that we can put this story together and raise money from, from matching grants from the state, possibly the National, National Park Service, despite you know, potential budget cuts. Um, you, you go to the National Park Service Visitor Center, the wonderful maps and everything around, and there's pointers to the Jason Russell House, and it's been on. We don't want to change the word monotony, that's all part of history, but we want to link Arlington to monotony as part of this bigger story. And uh, I, I, I think this is, this is a good thing to endorse. And, and, and we in the Historical Society will be working to, uh, to help tell the story better and more compelling. And I, um, I think it's important, one of the things that I've done, because I think um, Arlington's been sort of the pet, the poor sister in terms of our historic recognition. One of the accomplishments that the Arlington, Arlington contingent made was to put an insert in the National Park Service map to show the Jason Russell House, which hadn't been shown in the past. And I think the more we do that, the better, the more we're going to get. So I have a practical question. Mm -hmm. Strategically, how are we going to solve the parking problem? You know, when the bus load of uh, Chinese visitors come, yeah. And you want them to stop and see the Jason Russell House and then spend some money at the local restaurant. Right. They have to park the bus someplace. They're going to have to park it on Mass Avenue because they can't take that left on Jason Street. <laughs> yeah, but you could, you could, there are ways around this. I mean, yeah, you, you, you I, could I, have the bus come in, offload the people, offload the people, and go to some, you know, offside parking lot 
not on Mass Ave, some, right. somewhere else, and then come back and pick up the people when their tours are done. This, this, yeah. They don't have to park. The bus doesn't have to park on Mass Ave. It just needs to offload the people. Yeah, I'm just asking where, where can we park the bus? Just yeah. 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 Maybe? Oh, yes. That's a big part. Yeah. Okay. So, very practical question. <laughs> It's important. Yes. I have a uh, Okay. Oh, David. Uh, during the bicentennial years, um, <coughs> they put signage on the, for the Battle Road. Right. They used the two. They used the two routes. They used right. the Mass Ave route and, and the Medford Street. The Medford Street. Some of those signs are still there. Yes, they are. My question is, are those signs going to come down, and, and will these signs replace them? Um, hopefully, they will. But I think it. One of the things about signage, as you all know, is there are a lot of people that have to sign off on it. And we've had a MassDOT woman, a uh, great woman, Connie Raphael, from the district be at our meetings. Um, there's a lot, a whole process of signage for, because it's a state road, we have to get their permission. We also have to get permission from our historic district commissions and the Arlington Historical Commission in some areas where we want to put up signs. So we're sort of at the beginning of the process. And Lexington is ahead of Arlington in that. I, I had to go to the selectmen and show them the signage, but I haven't done much more than that. And now that we have the energetic Alley Carter, I'm going to try to offload it <coughs> to her. Because <laughs> she's got a lot of energy and is very enthusiastic. But they're, they're in terrible shape, those other ones. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when you have your meetings, you're talking about the whole district. Yes, the whole district. My, my meetings once a month, the, thir the last Thursday of the month, is with a representative from Arlington, and there are four of us, but we have one vote, and same for Lexington, Concord, and um, Lincoln. We meet in the Lincoln Town Hall. Well, will they all be paying 2000 each? They will not. Uh, um, and that's one of the, th my, one of the, bones of contention with me is the um, Lexington, who has been as much of a contributor as, as we are, did a, Richard Canale, who was the head of their planning commission, did a population survey, and he showed, of course, that we had more population mm -hmm. than anybody else. And I said, well, sh I don't think we can base it on population. Let's base it on um, business uh, percentage of tax rate. <laughs> but Lincoln has 7,000 people. We have many more than that. Yeah, they're all rich. They're all rich, I know. <laughs> so we're, we're, um, we're arguing that point because he thought it was, you know, it was a slam dunk. He was giving, giving me the 48,000. I said, no, you know, our, our business tax rate is four to six percent of our tax base and it's a single rate and when you can show me that you have a similar problem then I'll so we're, we're arguing about it but Lexington has been our partner they um, they're the fiscal agent which is really helpful they offered to be that um, in a way because they have a good planning department and they've they take <coughs> the money and they they watch it carefully they've done the procurement for both um, graphic design, um, you know, procure procurements that we've done. So I think we're lucky to have them. But um, Concord and Lincoln, I would not say, is, are paying their fair share. Well, how much are they paying? Nobody paid anything last year. They're looking at their budgets, and they're going to we're going to be discussing it next next time. You know, I can understand if we were chipping in, you know, well, half a million dollars yeah. each. <laughs> yeah. But. Two thousand dollars. I mean, Lexington's budget is twice ours. Yes, it is. So I, I mean, I don't worry about Lexington. They will certainly come up with the same amount of money that we do. And if you want to make the two thousand dollar contribution from Arlington contingent on a um, Lincoln and a Concord contribution, that would help me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so. Um, I think it's a worthy cause. We're slowly getting the word out, and I think it. It. I think this is really good signage, and I think it will help. Okay. Other questions?
Okay. Do you okay. know where your people here now? Um, I guess I have as many as I'm going to have. Uh, some more looking for parking. Okay. Um, That's why we moved down here, so we can get some parking. I apologize about the chairs, but when they moved us into the new place, they just... Yeah. There's no chairs. Um, okay, there's one chair there. Uh, if somebody comes in from the FinCom, they'll have to stand. Okay. Can can the committee and, and our guests introduce ourselves? Sure. Um, I'm Clarissa Rowe, the chair of the Community Preservation <coughs> Committee. Um, Eric Helmuth, who put together this presentation, is home with pneumonia. And we're very lucky. We have wonderful staff helping us this year. Um, Amy, who is at a class tonight, um, and Jim Feeney, who is the assistant town manager, has, I can't tell you how wonderfully helpful they've both been. And Jim is going to help with the financial part tonight. Okay, rest of the committee. So, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to. So uh, I'm going to deal with my chair because I actually heard this. Yeah. <laughs> you so can I go can, home. I can sit in the back. Okay. Sit in the back. Okay. Somebody wants to sit over here. Travel, you've been warmed it up. Okay. What's your article? I'll send that. 50, uh, 49, I think. 49, 69. Oh, 49. Okay. Leslie, can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Leslie Mayer. I am the um, Community Preservation Act representative from the Park and Recreation Commission. Hi, uh, Andrew Benson, uh, Selectman Appointee. Hi, I'm David Levy, Selectman Appointee. I'm Joanne Robinson from the Arlington Historical Commission. Then we have um, Nate. You want to introduce yourself? Matt Strasburg, Senior Planner. Who's going to talk about one of the things for us? And we have two, these two gentlemen, Mr. Finley and Mr. Parsons, have been extraordinarily helpful to the committee in the last couple of years because they've helped us put together some of the historic preservation projects. And um, they're our guardian angels, and I'm really <laughs> glad they're here. But they really have been incredibly oh, helpful. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell our wives that? What? Can you tell our I have told that? your wives that. How about my wings? <laughs> and then, then both the wives say, keep them busy, Clarissa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, we can go through this PowerPoint. Um, Chuck Taroni, unfortunately, has to be at a budget hearing um, in Reading, where he works. And... Richard, I thought Richard um, is the, um, the the housing authority designee, and Ken Lau is the redevelopment board designee, and I already talked to you about poor Eric Helmuth. Um, the the next couple of slides on the next page are ones that we've talked ad nauseum about, but basically the CPA is about historic preservation open space and recreation and community or affordable housing. And every year we hold public meetings. We track the local and state receipts. We receive applications this year because it was a more relaxed um, schedule. We had a two-part um, application process. We still are doing a lot of help with the applicants because <coughs> this is a new process and a new program, and there's a lot of a lot of people don't know what they should be doing. So we we have sent out examples of past work. We then were in the number four, which is consulting with the board of selectmen. We went to see Charlie's committee last week, and um, the board of selectmen have told me that they don't need to see me, which is fine. And then we'll. Um, we have taken preliminary votes, you'll see as we go through this, but what we wanted to do was come to you and capital planning and just sort of vet the projects with you um, before we take our final votes. Most of the projects, except for Whittemore, Whittemore Park, 
are in final form, and we're proud of them. We had ten applicants. Um, we now have nine, and we did combine two. On the next page, you'll see the pie chart, which shows the how we have to spend our money. 10% of it has to be on housing, 10% of it on open space or recreation, and 10% of it on historic preservation. There is, um, we can spend 3 to 5% on administrative expenses. Last year we did 5% and we're, we're um, saying that we'd like to do 5% again into the, this new year. What that does is pay part of the salary for Jim and Amy and also although we haven't had to use it that way, if all of a sudden there was a project that needed some sort of um, assess legal assessment or something like that, we would be able to use that money to hire somebody to do the kind of work that we don't have the expertise on the committee. Um, you'll see at the bottom what we're doing is um, we have 2182 thousand dollars worth of money and it actually the figure has changed as of today um, it's gone up fifteen thousand um, dollars but it was at three fifteen this afternoon so it didn't get added and then we're reserving um, <coughs> six forty one nine hundred for later appropriations this is an unusual year because last year we spent one year's worth of money but the way the law is written the first year you can't sp spend the money until um, the second year. So we're actually spending money this year, uh, the money collected in year one and the money collected this year. So it's a little confusing. We have more money to spend this year than any other time and that's why we have so much money going back to the reserve. It goes into the community preservation reserve and you'll see as we get into it that um, there's some big projects that are going to be happening this year, and we expect they will come back to us with some hefty construction requests, um, and you'll see why. We put in the 5% again for the administrative expenses. One of the things that we did was ask to have s more of Jim Feeney's time um, this year than we did last, uh, because he's been so instrumental in really tracking the projects that are under construction and really helping out the committee in a way that we really need. And Amy, as capital planning people know, is, is a wonderful financial um, manager and, and great help. So in the, on the next page, and if you're my age, you're not going to have trouble seeing it, <coughs> um, the top box shows the amount of money that we're getting, that we got last year, which or the first year, which was 1.311512. The next uh, um, figure is uh, an, a, an estimate, and the estimate is really just a guess at our part. We don't get the final figure until the end of March, and you, as you know, the third quarter is the time when abatements are happening. So we, can, we don't, we have a f accurate figure from the treasurer's office, but we're making an estimate at this point. We also, um, you'll see in the next line, the state match in September, they were saying it was gonna be 19%. Then Rich Biscay sure. called uh, this past week and they were saying 15%. So we've, we've w our estimates are conservative and that's the way we'd like them to be. <coughs> and then the, you can see the unspent money in the past and then the, the, the budgeted reserve accounts. Um, Jim, do you want to add anything to that? I think the only thing I would add that may be not shown here on this chart is though we budget conservatively and uh, rightfully so to make sure we don't have any shortfalls, that any revenues uh, that we get that exceed what we budgeted uh, will just will just become part of the community preservation fund balance will be certified at year end and available for appropriation during the following cycle should that be fiscal 17 second one down 
the official 16 uh, surcharge, so you have that mm -hmm. exact figure. Mm -hmm. But then it says fiscal 18. So should that be 17? No, annual town meeting this past spring, the current six projects underway were funded with estimated FY 17. 17. Revenues. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's very confusing. We'll stop being as confusing as we are now next year. Okay, Paul? So in fiscal 17, we're, we're currently spending fiscal 17 money. Yes. And in fiscal 18, we'll spend fiscal 16 and fiscal 18 Correct. money. Correct. Because you couldn't spend the money the first year. Correct. Okay. Could you repeat that three? No. <laughs> <laughs> he explains it much better than I do. <laughs> Thanks, exactly Paul. It. <clears throat> okay, and below that is a chart of the projects that we're doing. And you'll see um, the name of the project, who the applicant is, who the awardee is. And one of the big things that we've been talking about a lot this year is who's going to have the maintenance oversight. Um, this is something that's very near and dear to the committee members. And so we have put that in for your consideration and what the funding recommendations are. For instance, Downing Square came in um, with a request for $500,000. We didn't think that that was ready for um, $500,000 this year. Um, it's a project that's going to be a multi-year project, and so mm -hmm. we're giving them $100,000 towards hard costs um, in the hopes that that will generate more state and federal money. I mean, that's one of the things that we're trying to do with this program is generate other money from other sources, whether they're state or federal. And I think you may or may not remember what we um, did something like $3.5 million more for the Arlington Housing Authority's work last year with um, some of the funding that we did for their windows. Uh, so what I'm going to do, we can go through the chart, but I'm going to really go into the um, projects carefully. So I don't think we need to look at the chart more. Yes? Clarissa, when you say maintenance oversight, do you mean oversight of the physical maintenance when the project's completed? Right. Okay. One of the things that um, the capital planning people have worked on is um, maintenance for buildings. And one of the things that's coming up in sort of bubbling up with these CPA projects is that we need maintenance for site resources too. And um, the DPW is in charge of that and they're overstretched. So poor Jim is now responsible for all, most of it. <laughs> no, and, and so out of our conversations, Adam and Sandy and Jim have decided to put together a task force to look into the maintenance of these items. One of the things that concerns us Say you look at the, the Robinstown um, garden water feature. We want to make sure that if we're going to put as much money as we're putting into it, that when it's done, that it's taken care of. So that we're not having to come back in 25 years or 20 years and redoing it again. So that's one of the things that we're really trying very hard to, to ask a lot of difficult questions. Um, you can see on the side also the, the total um, project cost for all the projects. <coughs> so with our $2 million contribution, we're going to be um, getting $17 million worth of contribution. There are also a couple of projects that are uh, applying for grants. And so we're actually hoping to bring down the town's um, <coughs> contribution in the future but we don't, won't know about those grants yet. Um, the next page will show you <coughs> um, where the um, projects are for this year. Um, and Andrew also did want a combined one that shows where the projects were last year. And I think what it shows is a lot of them are along our scenic byway, <laughs> but there are a lot that are um, you know, they're, they're, they're different parks, but they're mostly ones that can be um, enjoyed by all Arlingtonians. Okay, so now we'll talk about the projects 
themselves and I will get some of my friends here to help me. Um, and David Levy is here to talk to help me with Down Square and 20 Westminster, and I believe Jonathan can help a little bit with this too. These are both projects that were um, recommended by the Housing Corporation of Arlington. Downing Square is a multi-year project um, that's at its beginning. It's Both of them are near each other, right across the street from each other. And um, like all affordable housing projects, this one will require a lot of diff different funding sources. And we're hoping with our $100,000 contribution early that, that that will help qualify it for more state funds. 20 Westminster is about to go into construction. Um, Downing Square has 34 um, affordable units, and West, uh, 20 Westminster is going to have nine. And I'm sure you know the building. Um, it's a very prominent building, and it's about to go into construction. You, would you like to talk about the projects and ask questions about the projects, or go where we through, through everything? No, actually, it might be good to go through it project by project okay. and, and take questions. So let's take Downing Square. Uh, questions from the committee? <coughs> Dean? So when we talked about the, when we talked about the affordable housing projects last year, we talked about how um, these come with accompanying deed restrictions. Absolutely, they do. So <coughs> just to make sure I understand, so on, on Downing Square, this project is in the early stages. And I think you said the project is at the beginning of a multi-year process of getting approval and total funding. So in this situation, money gets put aside. Right. Nothing really happens with it until it gets right. approved. Right. If it gets approved, the money then goes towards the project. Right. You're, I'm assuming you have some thoughts of putting more money towards it. You get the accompanying right. deed restrictions and, right. and, and things like that. Is that, is that how That's I write it? And the town also puts CBDG money towards this, both of these projects, and has. So, and they're more flexible. They're apt to put do some soft costs. We're not at that stage yet. We're really trying to do hard costs only. Um, we have grant agreements with all the <coughs> um, grantees, and we will be m more and more specific with the grant grantees on, with our um, agreements. So, so, so the so the reverse of this is if the project for some reason does not get approved and does not happen, the money is never expended. It goes back into the CPA Correct. fund, and it would probably, totally. based on the calculation, go to another affordable housing right. Right. project. So the fair statement, just to wrap it, is um, even though the project is early, even though you've appropriated, there is no CPA money at risk here. There's no scenario by which. The money gets spent and the project doesn't happen. No. Okay. Um, you know, the Housing Corporation of Arlington, and I believe one of your members sits on the board there, is tremendously reliable, and their people and somebody on my committee is to be an executive director. So um, we, we know that this will probably go forward. How long it will take, we don't know. And there was one member of our committee who voted against it because she felt that it was too early in the process. Okay. Other questions on down? Stephen, what, what, what is the timetable? If, if everything, like right now as we sit here today, is, is not, not the most optimistic estimate, but maybe. Mm -hmm. So um, these are very different projects, Westminster and Downing. Westminster is um, funded uh, with a lot of local money, particularly. Um, and not a lot of state money, which allows it to move more quickly, which is why it's going to be going into construction this year and why we're recommending uh, a much more significant investment. Um, Downing Square is looking for state financing um, and quite a bit of it, which means that it's going to go into competitive rounds for that money and it will likely take them two to three years just to get a commitment. Um, and then another six months or so after that to close. So it's going to be a while, but that's standard for projects like that. That's, they all go through the same process. And they usually have seven to nine different funding sources. So it's, um, 
And I, I think it's, you know, we, and we thought it would be worth putting this commitment on online to show a local interest so that DHCD <coughs> would be more willing to hand over money to the town. Charlie? When you have such a long lead time uh, on the contribution from the uh, uh, CP, CPA committee, does the funds that you set aside, do they still count towards the allocation of a funding you know, to affordable housing and open space, et cetera? Or do, does it only count when the money is actually spent? That's a good question. I don't really know the answer to that, and I'll try to find out a real answer. Um, because of, I, I don't know. Um, but I, I will ask and get back to you with that answer. Um, I think it's once town meeting has voted on it that it, it becomes real. But I don't, I know in this case, I would like to, to get a real answer on it. Okay, anybody else? Is this um, rental housing? Yes, they both are. Okay, and is this like all affordable standards or is there some market rate? N no market rate neither. And um, the the Westminster one is going to, they're going to be working with the Somerville Homeless Coalition to, pro to pro provide um, extra services to the um, people that live there, which I think is a, they will most likely be Arlington residents, but the Somerville Homeless Coalition is a, a wonderful group of people and, and they're going to be helping out. Okay, are there any questions either on Downing or Westminster? Does the Westminster, does the Housing Corporation own that now? Yes. Okay. And they've okay. been through all their permitting. Um, one of the things about the Downing Square is there is some potential hazardous waste there, so there, that's why it's more, more um, iffy. It's not more iffy, it's just going to take longer. Okay. okay, old burying ground. Um, and Mount Pleasant Cemetery, this came to us as two separate projects. We asked to put them together. Um, the original price tag was a million dollars. And we have, um, as you can see, reduced it substantially. Mm -hmm. Um, to 64,920, and this is where my guardian angels helped out. We had um, the cemetery commission and the historical commission working, and um, the Arlington Historical Society also helped put the pro proposal together. The crypts in both places, they're both historic sites, and the crypts are in bad shape, and if you go and look in the old bearing ground, you can see the back wall is falling down, and the one in Mount Pleasant is likewi likewise in bad shape. We thought it would be best to have a team of professionals, a structural engineer, um, a preservation um, professional, an arborist, and Ivan Major, who is the person that did the original old bearing ground study. He's a um, world famous stone restorer and have a real group of professional people put, to, put together a preservation plan um, instead of having money actually spent on the construction without a dollar amount and without um, some real looking at the costs and coming up with a phasing plan. And we think this will, is one of the two projects that will be quite expensive going forward. I don't know if you all have seen it, but there is a retaining wall between Allen's church and the, and the nursery school um, that is falling into the bearing ground and it, it's a real public hazard. Um, Jim, Joanne, you want to have anything? Uh, no, um, I just uh, wanted to say that um, Ivan Miger had initially, I'll just explain that mm -hmm. a little bit, put together a survey of the old burying ground which identified each stone and its needs but at the time that that was done and that was funded by the Massachusetts Historical uh, Commission the uh, the in-ground crypts and the walls were really not costed out and understood in terms of what the <coughs> repairs were 
So this goes to the next stage and also produces a plan for what has to be done first and when it needs to be, you know, executed. What the what the immediate problems and dangers are <laughs> that and the immediate needs for restoration. Now this is uh, the old burying ground is a uh, town property. Yes. yes. Is it under the cemetery commission? It's under jointly the um, Cemetery Commission and the Historical Commission. The Historical Commission holds preservation restriction on the old burying ground and has watched over, you know, had, we were the people who worked with the Cemetery First Commission to do the um, for, first step. Can more people be buried there or is it closed? It's closed. It's pretty closed. <laughs> <laughs> Good. There might be some room in the crypts. No, I mean the only the only the only things that I've been aware of in in the old burying ground changes are um, when a family that has already got a plot there and has had an expectation of being buried there, and I think that was probably thirty years ago or something like that. Something like that. I, I would just add for for the group, maybe everyone knows, maybe some don't, but. Jason Russell is buried in the old burial ground, and the the patriots who, who died with him at, at the uh, at, at that battle are buried there, and also the 30, 40, or so uh, unnamed British soldiers who died in that battle are buried there in an unmarked grave. So this this burial ground is is uh, two blocks away from the Jason Russell house. And connecting these kind of sites is, is part of you know what, what I call the bigger, more dramatic story about Arlington's history that, that goes back to the beginning of the Revolutionary War. He's going to be the docent, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, questions on the burial ground? Just for curiosity, uh, when they were buried back then, did they have crypts? Or was it caskets? Just caskets, wooden caskets. Not even caskets for, for caskets. Jason Russell and yeah. his group. Yeah, for, for, for <coughs> Jason Russell and those contemporaries, it's wooden caskets. If you go to the old burial ground, which I would recommend all of you do if you're you know, in and around the library and walking around, along the walls are also crypts that contain um, the remains of, of, of some of the famous names around the town, you know, Whitmore and Robin. And yeah. So there must be a problem with, you know, as, as the, the caskets deteriorate and collapse in on themselves with the land dipping, I would think. Yes. yes. That's right. <coughs> if you, if you uh, go to Wikipedia and put in Arlington, Massachusetts, the first photo that you will see is the Patriots Monument yeah. where Jason Russell and his <coughs> compatriots are buried. That's the first entry. So we think we could make it more of a tourist attraction. <coughs> and it's right. In my mind, I, I, I see it the same category as the old granary burial ground on the right. Freedom mm -hmm. Trail. Really, right. so, so, you know, it's 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 not you know Benjamin Franklin, John Hancock, and so forth. But for the Battle of Lexington and Concord, <coughs> it's it's that caliber, and and we're just letting it uh, sort of be very inconspicuous there. And we're very grateful that Jim um, also did some of the coordination and will step up during the construction phase. One of the things that happened last year was with uh, Whittemore Robbins Carriage House, that property is overseen by the Health and Human Services Department. And obviously they have a lot of things on their plate and that running a construction project isn't the best possible use of their time. So one of the th reasons that Jim's job title is helping us is to actually look and manage these projects and make sure that the public money is spent the way it should be. Anybody else? Okay. Okay. Robbins Town Hall Garden. Uh, this one, again, is an historic property. It's um, part of the, the town hall complex. 
the landscape work around it was designed by Frederick Law Olmsted's two sons from the Olmsted uh, brothers' firm. And the um, reflecting basin needs completely new mechanical system. And the concrete is all um, spalled and falling apart. <coughs> it has to be completely redone. Uh, this feature is a probably one of the most, if not the most significant one, of the gardens. And as you know, we have weddings there and ceremonies there, and the town charges money for um, these ceremonies. And it's it's very important um, that what we're charging money for looks as first rate as it possibly could. And one of the things that the town manager's office has said is that the income from these ceremonies will be used to maintain this reflecting pool going forward, a portion of them. And that is something that was very important during our discussions about maintenance. Um, when this was first brought up, um, I have a lot of experience working with the Friends of the Public Garden in Boston Common, and the amount that was in the capital planning uh, report was way, way, way too low um, because I've been involved with them for a long time. I know how much it costs to take an historic fountain and I said, you know, don't take my word for it. Make sure you get an engineer that does this kind of work. So they did go out and get Weston and Sampson um, that's done a lot of municipal work, municipal work for us. They do a very good job. They've done a lot of work for other municipalities and they've done work in Boston on similar um, fountains and pools. And that's why the 643.213, although it may seem to you like a very a large amount of money, is not. And um, the George White fountain was just repaired in the, in the Boston garden and it was 580,000. So um, our money includes the engineering and it includes the landscape historian that will oversee it. The design money, obviously, we're not really redesigning anything. We're, we're restoring it to its former glory. So um, <coughs> I think that there's a really good um, group of consultants working on this. The friends of the Robbins Town Garden brought this forward, which we really appreciate but it will be a town project and will be run by the town and not by the Friends Group. Joanne, anything else? No, I'm just okay, going to answer questions. Are you going to take care of the uh, statue there? Yeah, that was actually part of the initial project mm -hmm. and then, and then there, there Jim... There was already money in the budget yeah. and Jim managed helping to yeah. repair the statue. Yeah. It will be beautiful. The statue is really critical. You can't repair the no. water feature without having the statue look really good, too. Yes. And the, the statue will be repaired by a firm that, that I'm, um, my son works for. And the reason he became a sculptor is because of that statue. So I know it will be repaired well. And if you don't think it was, let me know, OK? <laughs> <laughs> OK, other questions? Okay, does, um, now that grotto, I think it's a grotto, mm -hmm. around the statue was repaired mm -hmm. by an Italian stonemason, oh, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago? Mm -hmm. yeah. So will that be yes. disturbed? Yes, that's, that's part of the project, of the project. is to reline the two, if you look at those two pools that are below the statues, there's a line that's peeled off of the edging, and so those will both be repaired, and stones that have fallen into the pools will be re-cemented and put back. And this will be done by an Italian stonemason? I'm not sure if he's going to be Italian, but that would be, <laughs> I think Portuguese. the guy who did okay. the last time. So you want quality of work. Yes. <laughs> he did a I'll see him, he's still there. <laughs> he did a wonderful job last time. So we should, find, we should find find him again. <laughs> what if I could ask? What's the timing on when you expect this to be finished, both for the burying ground and for the 
garden, Robin's garden. Um, both within the year. And if if you're all, I mean, Jim gives us um, updates on our construction projects. Would there be an interest in having sort of a report on the past projects? We'll go. We'll walk by and make sure you're doing it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? <clears throat> okay. Other Nathaniel, you want to come and talk about the historic sure, yeah. resources? This this young man is in is in charge of this part of it, and he's from the planning office. We're very lucky to have him. Still on the way from Ashland, really. Um, yes. Yep. This is one of the things that, like many of these projects, these projects sort of come out of the master plan that we've just done. There are almost always um, recommendations that come from the master plan, and so let from now you can take it away. You got it. Um, good evening, everybody. My name is Nat Strasberg, senior planner in the planning department. Um, so the historic resources inventory is really a list of the historic resources that we have in the community. It could be structures, homes. Um, a whole bunch of different types of resources are on this list, and it's really a critical list. It's very important. It's, we move into the future and as we want to preserve all of the historic resources that the community has and celebrate these resources, it's important to understand what we have um, currently. Um, so that's really what the purpose of the list is. There's also a lot of new development in town and it's not a bad thing to have a list to understand what resources exist currently. Um, a review of the list has shown that a significant number of the entries need to be updated. Um, there are a number of different errors and so the goal here really is to update the significant portion. We've counted uh, 300 entries that are in need of update out of the total of over 1,100 entries um, that we really have to take a closer look at. And so the first part of this project, um, main part of this project is really updating um, that inventory to get a better understanding of what's out there. Um, there are two other important parts of the project. Um, it's important also to understand resources that have not been included, that we don't have in mind. Uh, we need to take a better look at the community, different parts of the community that maybe we haven't taken, uh, examined well previously, and um, maybe there are new resources to add to the inventory. So the second part of this project is really um, beginning to take a closer look at other areas of the community to understand what's out there, to understand what has to be added to the inventory. Um, and the third part of this project um, specifically has to do with the high school building and it regards the production of a historic structures report for the high school building and what that really does of course is it is it um, it examines the historical development of the building the important architectural historical features that are in need of preservation and it also issues a series of recommendations that are key for moving forward as you think about the future of the of the high school building so those are really the three components of, of what's here and one of the things about the high school, if in the feasibility study they decided that they wanted to keep the older part of the high school, we'll have this historic structures report to talk about what kind of shape it's in. And also, if they decide they want to go ahead with it, then that part of the construction could be um, possibly funded with CPA funds because it's historic. We've got the background, we've got the historic structures report and we've got the, um, it would have to be done to the Department of Interior Standards, but I don't think that that would be a problem. I understand from that Kathy Bodie said that's the only part of the high school that's really in good shape. <laughs> so, I, don't, I don't know what's going to be decided, but I think it, it gives the town an option, which I think is good. But this won't put any interference or roadblocks no. if the if the towns decide to just build a new building and tear right. this all down. Right. No, no it won't. Anyway, it's it's just giving you a tool if you need it. <coughs> Questions? Um, well, what's the criteria for defining a historic resource? Historic resource um, can be a number of different items. It could be a home, it could be a historic object, it could be a burial ground, it could be a structure like the water tower, for example. 
Um, so there are a number of different um, <coughs> criteria that you know that would um, okay. that would be used to add a pool. Okay, those are the types. But the, what would make them historic? What would make them historic? It has to be older than 50 years, um, and also um, it has to go before the historical commission. And they and and the process of going before the historical commission and being evaluated would also. <laughs> It can, it can be that um, a building might have significance because of its design. It could be, and, and its age, it could be that the, a building that is associated with a particular individual who was uh, in some way significant in Arlington's history could be designated. It could be that uh, a building that is, um, you know, of an unusual uh, styles, so for example, more modern, and I, and I mean, you know, early 20th century modern, not contemporary modern uh, houses could be designated, um, you know, because of their unique design. Even though they're new. No, no even new. I'm saying older. Then it has to still be older. But uh, and then the other kind of thing is that we have set aside um, in the past some uh, neighborhoods where the, uh, their historic neighborhoods in the, in the, the neighborhood itself has a consistency of design and was built at the same time. So for example, um, Kensington Park, which was developed, all those buildings were developed at the same time and they have a historical consistency. Um, we, we look at those houses as forming a neighborhood that is important. <coughs> those in, kinds of including things. Including if there are newer houses within the Well, the newer houses we, we, we include because they're next door to the older houses, but there's a difference in how you work <laughs> with those buildings. Other questions? Um, how did, um, Grant? Um, The high school has a historic aspect to it, yeah. but you wouldn't stand in the way of it being torn down. Yeah. Once it's torn down, would it still have? It would no longer have a historic Storm. designation. Yeah. Right? Now we, in my personal opinion, though, <laughs> I'm not going to make be making this decision. I think that the the high school um, is a visual, visually, uh, an important landmark along the, the Massachusetts Avenue. And that uh, it's been there for a long time, and it has significance because of both of its age and its function. But you know, that's not something I'm not going to make the final decision <laughs> about what the town is going to do with that. But I would like to have the building documented um, just because of its importance, and also to be able to, um, if if in fact um, it there there is a decision to preserve it then you can use either CPA funds or other state funding tax credits um, to keep it standing. <coughs> there, are, there are other historic preservation um, sources for funds to preserve buildings like that. One more wrinkle on that. So if you, by chance, had to tear the whole building down, rebuild one, it would no longer qualify for right. CPA funds. That's correct. That's, correct. Okay. That's correct. And one of the things we're also talking about is the land in front of the high school, because if you talk about character defining defining features, features. that open space in front of the high school is a very important thing in town. But you know, money talks. Nobody walks. We're not. We're, we'll see what happens. New York. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking just about the low building, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, other questions? Now, how Charlie. does this... Oh, Charlie. So, uh, with respect to the part of the high school that has potentially historical significance, um, if the uh, town were to take it, you know, we, we move historical buildings all over the town, right, and then put them in different places. So if the town were to take it apart brick by brick and then reassemble it, would it still be historic? <coughs> um, I wanted to say masonry. Buildings are really difficult to move, and so 
difficult to move. Masonry buildings are very. Building, I know. Yeah. Um, and I'm a little bit of a purist, so you probably don't want to hear it from me. I don't think that we should be moving historic buildings to other parts of the town and putting them in vacant lots. But that's you know that I'm 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 trained in history. I don't believe in it. Lots of preservation people do, so don't listen to me. Okay. <laughs> you haven't in the past. <laughs> and we remain friends. <laughs> How does this relate, if it does, there is a bylaw in the town uh, that prohib prohibits or gives the historic commission the ability right. to delay demolition of a building right. for one one year, year. Yeah. and uh, you better be nice to her. Well, um, <laughs> how does this relate to that list? Doing the survey of the building doesn't necessarily mean that it goes on the inventory. But the and so the list that right, you have right. on your just just within just within just thinking you know about even if it were put on the inventory. Uh, we worked with closely with the redevelopment board when the Sims building <coughs> was torn down, and we worked with the school committee or the school reconstruction. Um, and when there, it, we don't stand in the way really of you know we, never, we didn't stand in the way of the of the uh, you know change in the use of the Sims land at the Sims hospital site. So we we can we don't have to enforce the one year delay. We can vote to not preferably preserve a building. Now if a building is torn down, does it come off your list? Yes. <laughs> it does. Okay. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Sandy came. <laughs> The next one is the Spy Pond Edge, an erosion project. Um, it's, <laughs> it's phase two. We, we funded the study last year, and this is for the public edges of Spy Pond, and we're actually going to do finished drawings, the engineering, and then build it, and the price tag is one of our highest ones at 552900 this is a project that's put forward by the um, Conservation Commission. And you'll see later there's one in the reservoir that's the Park and Recreation Commission project with the Conservation Commission. They're both, both commissions are working together because a lot of the engineering for both projects is going to be similar. So these are um, cooperative projects. And this is a project that uh, one of the Conservation Commission alternates is putting in a um, land and water conservation grant next week to hopefully pay for about $80,000 of this fund. We don't know that we'll get it, but um, at least we're going to try. Any questions? Now, the, the, the property along Spy Pond Park the, the park there that mm -hmm. was all rebuilt that, that needs to be rebuilt sort of again no no see it's, this it's uh, the park was rebuilt this moves further into the pond and right. takes care of some of the erosion think about the park work was almost a first phase of getting things stable and now we're going to stabilize the shoreline itself okay. hopefully this project will also be something that the other spy pond abutters who have um, erosion problems can use. This is a um, very standard construction practice now. You can see those logs, the core fiber logs that are <coughs> everywhere. We're hoping that the, the <coughs> private citizens will also use it if they have erosion problems. So the techniques will be made available to any yeah. of the abutters to spy pond so that they can themselves do it. Okay, are there any other any questions? Okay. 
Okay. And what's the timing on these? Is the fiscal year of 17? Mm hmm Is it that short? I think, how long even? Your year longer, I believe. Right. So there, there'd be three periods, but the first updating, the updating of the inventory would be for this. Yeah. So would be? For the, would be for this coming fiscal year. Okay, and then the shore? They say they can do it in a year. That may go into. Yeah. I would be surprised. Depending on the construction schedule. I would be surprised yeah. that it doesn't lapse. <coughs> okay. okay. Whittemore Park um, revitalization study. This is coming out of our park and recreation. I mean, our planning and community development uh, group. And I know you all are familiar with it. It's supposed to be our town common, but nobody ever uses it. So we're, um, there was some uh, initial work done as part of the Mass Avenue Mass Dot work, but um, Jenny Rate wants to uh, really rethink the park and come up with a schematic design that um, solves a lot of the problems that are there. That it's very dark. There are too many trees. Um, some of them should be cut down because they're not in good shape. There are lots of signs. Um, the railing is falling apart, but what she wants to do is hire somebody to do an overall plan, to work with the community, to work with the historical commission, to come up with a plan that everybody, there's consensus on. Um, it's a very important part of town, and this is one, um, this is the one that, that they initially asked for $50,000, and they asked today to have it up to 65000 um, I think one of the things that we did in our review was talk about the project notification form and some of the historic preservation work that needs to go along with it. This is also on the National Register, and so that there was a request for another $15,000. The full committee hasn't, um, we just got this request this afternoon. We will be taking formal votes later. What is your timing on the formal votes? Because we have to... My, if I remember correctly, our job is just to, is to recommend yes or no. Right. We can't substitute or do anything like that. So I think we want your final votes before we take our vote. Okay. We were trying to be respectful. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that our final votes will change from our initial votes, um, but we were trying to be respectful. At our next meeting, we'll take our final votes. Which is? So how did we did this last year? We did it in a real hurry. <clears throat> yeah, we just voted the Finance Committee supports all the projects recommended by the Community Preservation Act. So we're yeah we're not getting into details on that. So uh, one of the reasons the committee wanted to wait for final votes was to see if there was any input that needed to be incorporated because we haven't finalized the conditions that we're going to put on the um, projects. Yeah, oops, sorry. We will have conditions that we put on the projects. Um, and, you know, this is one we might have some conditions. We already have, uh, we asked for a project notification form that wasn't part of the initial um, package. And so we are, we work very carefully with the uh, um, people that are asking for the money to make sure that the projects are as um, comprehensive as possible, but also realistic. Now, who has jurisdiction over this? The selectmen. Okay. Now, that's why there's a pet rock there. <laughs> the, the redevelopment board also has yeah. some jurisdiction. Yeah. Okay. Are there any questions? Alan? There was the, the walk shop last summer with VHB that partially addressed this. Is this a continuation of that, or is that informed us at all? Yes. It did. Um, there was, if they did the, an initial design, but the initial design set off fireworks in some people's minds, and so that's not shown here. And I believe John Wharton said he would lie down in the middle of the tracks because they were not shown in the VHB design. So that's why that's, we've got a picture of that instead. So the tracks will stay? I believe so. Because we'll, there'll be a lot of people lying down. Or we'll have John Wood as part of the permanent display. 
Maybe we should have a, a statue of Don Marquis pointing at the track that he took up in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions? Now, how does this relate to the study that Alan mentioned? I mean, are two different groups looking to do something here? They, this is a, the original study was a MassDOT study. The MassDOT study won't pay for this kind of work. The MassDOT study will pay for roads and roadway improvements and bike lanes, but they don't pay for this kind of um, work, either the study, they did an initial study, but they won't do preliminary design, they won't do construction drawings. So we expect this project to come back <coughs> next, next year with um, a request for construction and construction documents. Because it wouldn't, it wouldn't be compliant with mass dots. Okay, so the 65,000 is for mm. actual work or for? Study. study, study. More detailed study. Other questions? Okay. Okay, Millbrook. And the study will be for next year. Next year, yes. Okay. Uh, Millbrook Linear Park pilot project. Again, this came out of the master plan, but also I don't know if any of you have seen the Millbrook study that was done by people on the redevelopment board a couple of years ago. Really excellent. Looking at a water body that's been very part of our, very much part of our history, and goes parallel to the Minuteman bike trail. This is um, an initial study um, right near the Grove Street um, area that's owned by the Park and Recreation Commission. Um, the idea is to look at the at a possible linear park along there, and there is a bridge there that goes into a condo association and try to work with them. This is a really, really beginning project, and it's the Mystic River watershed that wants to do it with us. and with um, input, obviously, from the Park and Recreation Commission. <coughs> Let's see. Okay, so again, this is uh, planning to get the yeah. get the process going. Questions? Alan? So w w what's the um, range of this, this portion of the study? Brattle Street to Grove Street. Brattle Street to Grove Street to Grove Street. Potential. Or, Looking uh, at the potential. Grove Street. Looking at the potential co to connect Brattle and Grove okay. with uh, some sort of access that would be the beginning of this notion of a linear park. Um, they also, because they have scientists on staff, they've done some water testing in the Millbrook. Um, all for a number of years, they are going to make the water testing part of this project and sort of get it out to the public so the public has an idea of what the water quality is like there, which I think is a good, good thing to do. If I remember correctly, it was rated D. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have yes. a lot of Ds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Our little water bodies. Air White Brook, Mill, Mill River, Ds. Questions? Comments? Remember, they're working for feedback. No feedback. Okay. It's fine with me. <laughs> um, Okay. Oh, this will be again in fiscal 17. Yes, please. And this next one. Well, possibly not. Because there may be um, part of what's here, the, the Wellington, within the Park and Recreation Capital Plan, I think if you look out to about 2020 or some, somewhere around there, there's an entry for Wellington from mm -hmm. the Park and Recreation Commission. So this study may inform that capital project, but it may not happen until that. <coughs> mm -hmm. but, but the study will happen in this. The fiscal study will happen study, in the yeah, fiscal yeah. year, but the it may not. Construction may not happen. Okay. Um, and this is another really great project, the Arlington Reservoir Master Plan and Survey. Uh, this has been on the capital plan for a while, and. They're um, asking for $100,000. Um, this is, I would like to say that the Park and Recreation Commission has, in the second year, produced the best proposal um, that we got. Um, they did last year and they did this year. And um, we assume that's because they've had to go to capital plan for so many years. They're very well versed in it. But this is a wonderful project. This is a tremendous asset 
for the town and they're going to have a very good <coughs> engineering um, company and an ecologist for an ecological firm looking at the reservoir and they're also going to be doing a um, survey because that information has been missing from the town records. Okay, so once again, this is for planning. Planning. Soon to come back, I believe, is money for construction. What do you foresee constructing? Uh, our, our very preliminary assessment would get it at probably a million plus. No, but what would you do? To do the work? Yeah, and there was what construction? What were the elements of it? Well, very similar to what's happening along the uh, shorelines at Spy Pond, to the ecological edging to stop the erosion, to do over the beach completely. Uh, mechanicals uh, and any of the... A few years back we did a survey of the beach goers, and there are a number of items on that uh, list of things that need to be done as far as uh, improving the quality of the water. Um, the parking parking lot is a mess. Um, we're putting together uh, band-aids and bubble gum to keep the mechanicals uh, running this year. There's a, a request for 25,000, I think, for the, uh, for the pump. That's just to keep it going. But if you look at the, uh, the bathhouse and the buildings, the, uh, they're in rough shape, very rough shape. Um, the filtering systems that, that are used haven't been updated in many years, and uh, including the ADA accessibility <coughs> for the site. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. Cleanliness would really be helping, helped if you get rid of the geese and ducks. <laughs> well, we're, we've always been hopeful that we find yeah. a way. But, yeah. The coyote's <laughs> getting tired. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie, you had a... Uh, yes, we, I think the town spent about $750,000, maybe more, with matching funds on the dam, uh, mm -hmm. you know, reconstruction of the dam a couple of years ago, uh, probably five or eight years ago now. Yeah, well, like um, 2005, 2006. Yeah, probably. Uh, so, do you plan any changes to that no. infrastructure? No. I, I mean, if you, if you go down there, that's actually uh, one of the nicer sections of of the area. We're hoping to make sure that what exists and the work that was done <coughs> that we leverage off of that and continue the pathway all the way around because that's that's been stabilized and um, when that work was completed it really opened that area up to a lot more use. We were seeing a lot more uh, people, birders and walkers and a lot more passive recreation use beyond the beach area. So we're not the, the dam itself is stable and, and done. There's a, f there's a little bit of an uh, erosion that we're probably going to deal with coming um, off of the uh, dam area down toward Herd Field, um, where the pathways didn't get put in well. But that was more recreational than dam safety. What about the water testing? They continue to be, um, you know, it's it, they continue to be, to be, and we continue to work with them. The Water Bodies Fund works to get rid of them. I don't think that there's a permanent solution to get rid of them, but that's part of the ecological ecological assessment that will be done in looking at the water quality and what other invasives there are, and working to see if there are other techniques that could be used. Is, is it possible to drain the pond and get, get rid of that invasive? Um, I don't know. Stuff and then refill it. And we can't, we're not supposed to be paying for maintenance. CPA funds are not supposed to be paying for maintenance, which is why we've set, had such a conversation about it because, as you can tell, the what reservoir needs to be repaired and restored. The, um, the town hall fountain is another thing. You know, we've, we've had long arguments about whether this is maintenance or, or preservation. <coughs> We think of them as preservation of natural resources. Well, the reservoir is from the historic. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
And that's one of the reasons, Charlie, that we wanted to do this in collaboration with the Conservation Commission. What's been on the capital plan for the Park and Recreation Commission really has been looking at just the beach. But that recreation area is more than just the beach. And we've recognized that over the past several years that, you know, we could enhance the beach, but that doesn't address the greater area. And, and we want to make sure that we look at all aspects of it as a, as a gem that we have in town still. Wow. Okay. Well, Christine. Leslie, can you just tell me again what's, what you anticipate including in the ecological assessment? We're going to look at water, qual um, water quality, do an inventory of the flora and fauna, look at um, the erosion, shoreline erosion. With the look civil, the they'll inflows. look at the drainage, the inflows. There are inflows to that, there are uh, sewer, well not sewer, but uh, stormwater inflows. So the ecological assessment is about a third of what we're going to do, um, and the survey to make sure we understand the boundaries that belong to the town. Because even though much of the land is in Lexington, Arlington owns the property. And so we want to get a clear understanding of where our boundary lines mm -hmm. are. So you own all that property around the reservoir? The town of Arlington does. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yes. Uh, Christine, you're all set? OK, Jane. So I'm just, just trying to understand the scope of the um, I guess we call it stud survey. So obviously we've talked about the body of water, the reservoir. We've talked about the beach, the accompanying pothole parking lot, and things like that. Um, so then if I look at the picture, I see all this other shaded green stuff. Mm -hmm. Is that just shaded green, or is that part of the survey? We are going to look to see how much exactly what the town owns in entirety around the edge of the reservoir, whether it's in physically in the municipality of Arlington or Lexington. Like we, we, we own land, we own uh, the pathways around there. I think it's up into, uh, you know, up to the property line, but we don't own, for example, Ridge Park, Ridge Park. That's a town of Lexington property. But how far Arlington's property ownership goes in that particular area is unclear. Um, so we do we do have ownership around uh, all the way to the edge of the Booza Farm land. Um, we want to see how much, if any, encroachment has happened over the years with the farming. Uh, and we want to make sure that we have a good, clean, clear understanding of that so that we can um, put, put in a good walking path all the way around. Okay. And then you're not I'm going to assume you're not going to push down into the, at least on this survey, into the playing fields. No, I would just add that this map, and the, the yeah. coloring is tough. Yeah. The key will tell you that those green shaded regions, regions are just open space property. Oh, okay. Being indicated on the map, so but not, not necessarily. Not scope of the project. Yeah, it's no, not no, defining no. the scope no, of the no, project. No, no, no. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Yeah. Thanks. John? Yeah, I, um, if, they, if the boundaries are unclear, how do, do we figure out the, uh, at this time, how do you figure out the kind of the allocation of responsibility for property maintenance and management? You're right. That's exactly why this is such an important project, because the town really hasn't known for a long time. Um, as part of my land trust work, I looked into I actually went and talked to the, when I was a select, but I went and talked to the selectmen in Lexington to say, can't we have some sort of agreement? And she said no, she wasn't interested in it. But um, we don't really know what we own. And so with this property line survey, we'll get a much better idea. I don't, like many surveys, property line surveys, we're going to find that there are areas that are, I would imagine, under contention that both towns will think that they own them, but this is the beginning of a conversation, and then we'll have a much better idea of what they should be doing and what we should be doing. I guess uh, my question is more basic. What, what happens today? 
you know, it, it, something nothing. needs to be done. No, nothing happens. That's so it's just not maintained. It's not maintained. No, that's why if you you know if you walk around there, you're going to see uh, a jumble of tree roots and brush and and falling mm -hmm. trees, uh, branches that haven't been collected in years. We do have. We are lucky to have um, residents who form committees. So there is an Arlington Reservoir Committee, and for many years they've gone out and they've done some of the some of the most obvious work that needs to be done, putting down wood chips at times or cleaning um, brush and litter. But there is no town response from either entity, unless we're talking about we. There have been conversations around the, the water chestnuts and the issue of meat of getting rid of those water chestnuts. Is there a Lexington Reservoir Committee? Yes. No. Yes. Not a Reservoir Committee. I mean, well, there are some Lexington great, residents. Great Meadows. There's committee. Great Meadows. Yeah. But, and there are some Lexington residents that oh, very do participate yes. and do participate with the Arlington, with the Vision 2020 mm -hmm. um, efforts. Okay, John, you think, what's that? Uh, Alan. Well, it's sort of related. I think mean, regardless of where the boundaries end up, Lexington is still going to own like half of it. And I know it's been a problem with the water bodies, the water chestnuts. I mean, if you look at a satellite photo of the reservoir, it's like this side's clean and this side's green. Um, can we can we realistically do a master plan without solving the relation with Lexington issue? I think is, is, that, is that a totally unsoluble problem? No, I think it is. There are a bunch of advocates that have been working in Great Meadows and are very, they love the Great Meadows and the reservoir. But the town um, mothers and fathers haven't seen that it's necessary to put any money into it. I think once we do a survey, it'll become more of a priority when we can go to them and say, you own this, we own this. You know, right now, I, I think it's a, it's a matter of status quo. Nobody's doing anything. but. We're spending money on it as we have spent in the past with the water chestnuts. I think with a, this is a way to try to get them involved, to try to share some of the responsibility. I mean, at least in, you know, like when you cross from an Arlington Road to a Belmont Road, you can tell. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess in the path around it, you can tell there's an Arlington path or, or a Lexington path. Well, but, but, but again, we but, own But the water goes back and forth. Right. You know? but, but we own it. We own the, that land in Lexington. It is the town of Arlington in property in Lexington. Great Meadows. Around the reservoir. Uh, uh, we own the land? Yes, yes. And so it's determining but how much of that. <laughs> Correct. It's going to be a very complicated survey. Okay. Yeah. We, we own the land. Yes, the that goes back to the, you know, the original purpose That's back purpose in the, the, the 1800s. Right. Yeah. 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 Repairing rights. Yeah. How the, we were using the Great Meadows. Right, the Great the Meadows and the Arlington and the Reservoir. So we do own, we have ownership of the land. We sell in in trade a little town. slice of Great Meadow for the rest of the water. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, that's... <laughs> Why don't we just take it by eminent domain? I don't think you can draw, take water off of the reservoir. What's that? Did Lexington ever draw water off the reservoir like Arlington did? I don't, I don't think, think so. we, I don't think anyone ever actually ended up. I think that everyone joined um, the, the water resource I before they original, actually drew it. That was originally it was. the yeah. purpose, and, but I don't know that and they the ever actually. The fire hydrants down. The black fire hydrants are connected there. Yeah. Uh -huh. oh, so the fire hydrants. <laughs> been using the water. Right. I, that part I don't know about. No. It'll be an interesting su yeah. um, project. Yeah, just the black ones, a little pressure. Right? Okay. Yeah. Um, we'll get, you'll get your engineers to look at the black hydrants. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Christine? Do so we know that Lexington has not conducted a survey? Yes. They have conducted no, a survey. No, they have not. They have not conducted a survey. They're not on, they don't. They don't see any, see any reason to change what they've done, which is nothing, because they don't see us as a threat. There was at one point a, a while, long while ago a proposal to put a golf course there, and then they were a little worried. Have a great, great, great the great Meadows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, on the rest. Lexington has not done a survey. Yeah. So if we wanted to put a shopping mall there, they would probably become interested. They yes. would. Okay. 
Uh, Peter. Leslie, is it, there was a small support by the town to doing the uh, wood chip spreading. They delivered an enormous pile of wood chips. They did. They did. They d delivered it to up to the top on Wall Street. You're absolutely they right. They stayed away from the pond. No, yeah. <laughs> they went to the edge, and then we took it down. A while ago, there was a there was going to be maybe in building the dam or rebuilding the dam. They they wanted to take all the trees down from along the berm. Yes. Yes. Correct. Is, is is that been finished? Yes. The, the work that was done to uh, rehab the dam included the uh, planting of many new trees, and uh, many of those went around the reservoir, and that's been completed. The the uh, the volunteer committee has also created a habitat garden there, um, all volunteer labor. And so there's been a, there's been attention, and there has been work that was done, so that those trees have been. That issue has been resolved. <coughs> there are still trees, and there were trees. Any trees that were removed were replanted. OK, other questions? Mm -hmm. More excitement that. about this one than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> That's an exciting place. Can we ask general questions? Sure. Sure. So it, it, maybe it's not a question. I guess it's a, a, a comment. So going back to the unrestricted amount of 640000 I think we talked about this briefly last year um, I, I guess my unsolicited suggestion for that money would be not to spend it at any point in either the short near or short watered or long term mm -hmm. future in the sense that I think we all have that you always have that sneaking suspicion that you're going to want it and you're going to want it quickly at some point mm -hmm. and if it goes away it's not there anymore right right we we um, you know we've we've had both sides of that argument given to us Dean um, some people said, well, why aren't you spending all your money? The, um, I feel the way you do, which I think we've got some big projects coming along. Um, certainly in this year we do. And I think that we should be really using our money wisely. And it's one of the reasons when the initial request came in from the Cemetery Commission for a million dollars and they hadn't done any kind of study work, we said, no, you really need to s step back, get some professionals in tell you how much it's really going to cost and then then we'll look at a construction budget but not now and I think it's you know, being conservative about how we're spending the money is not an idea. Yeah, yeah. and I think, you know, like we, talked, I think we talked about last year which is at some point I think it's always nice to have that you know it's like a targeted reserve amount right I don't know what that would be yeah, this amount you add to it over the years and, and just in the event that something comes along and right. you have that one moment you wish you had I'm going to make it up a million dollars to just acquire something. Right. It's not, you know, it's not there, it's not there. Right. But if it's there, you feel good about yourself and say, all right, we did it. Right. So. Charlie, did you have a? Yes. Uh, Larissa, I wonder if you could um, just address the various uh, methods that you have in place to uh, monitor these projects and ensure that they're executed with some degree of quality assurance in you know are properly managed given that some of the work is inside the town some is outside etc right um and you mean outside the town it being the housing right, corporation of arlington yeah. and, and the right. mystic river watershed um we've done a lot of talking about that charlie and i think one of the things that we were concerned and especially now having jim and amy both helping us with the work having Jim's ability to go out, and he's gone out and looked at the Jason Russell House work that's been going on. You know, a bunch of volunteers that are working on full time in another job. We need to have somebody on in the town's um, hierarchy that's really looking at these projects carefully and knows something about construction, which Jim does, and is, you know, reviewing the invoices carefully to know um, to make sure that they're really valid. And one of the things that we were concerned about with the Spy Pond project to begin with was um, they have lost their conservation agent. And they're, um, so they're now, I mean, Nathaniel Stevens is being the agent. He's doing everything. And I told him not to come tonight, but I think there is a proposal in um, the works for an uh, environmental planner for the planning and community development department that would become the conservation agent 
and also mm -hmm. would be more able to write grants like the land and water grant that's being done by again a volunteer um, to have the ability to help Jim go out and monitor work that's going on um, with you know the the two ecological projects and we think um, we were worried about it we ask a lot of difficult questions and we had actually pushed back on the Conservation Commission saying why don't you break this project into two years instead of one year they were pretty adamant that they wanted to keep it as one year and I think part of that is there's a you know both the conservation people and the historic preservation people haven't had money to do projects and so they they want to get them all in under the wire to make sure <laughs> that they still get their money but I think I mean that's why I think the spy pond project will probably take two years we're lucky because we don't have time limits <coughs> on our money and that makes a tremendous difference it just it's going to sit there they won't get the money until they've met the milestones everybody has a milestone and one of the thing a, a milestone of how their projects are going to be spending their money we are asking everybody to do a maintenance plan that becomes part of the o overall work so that when the project is done there is a maintenance plan that goes back to the town with the mystic river watershed um, association they have had a long history with the town they <coughs> actually are rent payers to the town because they're in the um, central school and um, the park and recreation commission have looked at it very carefully Jim's going to look at it carefully we don't know yet because they haven't talked to the condo association uh, whether they're going to be in favor of this idea and so one of the con the conditions we're putting on the grant is that they do some initial work reach out to the condo association before they get any money whatsoever because we don't we don't want to waste money um, on something that's not going to work out I think to a certain extent but I think yeah. it's worth adding yes, uh, yes. as a case study maybe uh, the Kimball farmer house and before I was supporting the committee I believe right. As part of the grant agreement, you're placing contingencies that right. before that money is awarded, you receive your certificate of occupancy. Right. So ensuring then uh, that the builder and the project is going through the existing framework for any construction project to ensure that the appropriate sign-offs are given along the way through inspectional services. And Park and Recreation has um, a tradition of running <coughs> construction projects. They have John Marshall who's the recreation director and he'll be overseeing it so what we're trying to do the kind of structure that parks and recreation has in place is what we're looking for for all of these projects we want some staff member from the town of Arlington to be having eyes on this with Jim coming in at different times to, to oversee it but that's that's <coughs> you know we want to make sure that it's somebody that has construction is part of their base I mean that's why the the Chester engineering that's been working on the um, project on spy pond they will continue their work they'll do the working drawings but they'll also do construction observation during construction so we're making sure that there is um, real oversight of the projects as they go forward okay um, John and then Paul yeah, just uh, follow up on Dean's comment with a question. Uh, are there any restrictions under the law that might limit the size of the reserve fund or require the committee to you know, grant a certain percentage of the... No, the only money? restriction is that we spend 10% of our money on the three, three sort of four uses. And so far that hasn't been a problem. We've, we've you know, they've been pretty equally split. I'm sorry, Eric's not here because he has wonderful charts that I'm sure he'll have for town meeting. But um, no, there is no regulatory. Okay, Paul. Um, can you give a brief discussion of the projects that people asked for that you did not approve, especially like your your top two that you wish you could have. Uh, no, we no. Uh, um, well, the one we combined the cemetery projects into one. The other one was Monomy Rocks Park, which um, 
really was, wasn't ready for um, us to fund it yet. It came to us um, sort of uh, half-baked. We couldn't get anybody in the town structure to take it on as a sponsor because the DPW is overcommitted and the Park and Recreation Commission is overcommitted. And again, it's one of those ones that part of what needs to be done is restoring a water, an ecological system that was put in place only 23 years ago. So we, we need, they, all the players need to work on that. Some of the work that was, they wanted to do, the friends group there have paid for. There was um, dredging of the stilling basin there. And then there's a lot of work that still needs to happen with the, the well that's there and the failure of the electricity. So they're, it's sort of in the, we're hoping maybe next year they'll come forward. I believe that was the only project application. <coughs> yes. Not funded this year. Right. Okay. Any, any other questions? How are your uh, projects doing this year? Well, well yeah. as you know, the Kimball Farmer House is done. Uh, project was uh, completed shortly after being awarded right. the funding. I did the walkthrough. Uh, <laughs> we speak for is that Richard? the one up on Mass Avenue towards the Heights. <coughs> Yeah, at the yes. corner of the forest, forest. And, yes. and, and then, then um, so then the housing right. authorities window project. I think the bid opening is tonight, which is why Rich is not here. But um, they, I think that's on track. He has a job to keep them on track. Robbins, we've had our um, community input meetings. All of the design work is being done. Uh, we should be going out for bid within a month or so. Oh, so I'm that's sorry, which project? Robbins Farm Park. The Robbins okay. Farm Park project. The Spy Pond Phase 1 has, can be, has okay. been completed. That's what informed the application for uh, Phase 2. And the Whittemore Robbins Carriage House construction bid opening was today. And we expect to uh, begin construction in the spring. You're going to restore the table inside? The no. It's not just okay. solely an <laughs> exterior <laughs> renovation. Okay. I, w I want that restored, too. This is the inside of the carriage house. Is, um, they used to have a turntable so that the Robin sisters didn't have to turn their car around. They just drove in and then the turntable turned the car around. But it was, it was uh, filled in with concrete. One of our ad alternates was, though, to restore the uh, historic dovecote cupola to the top of the property that exists, like on the uh, main house. So. Do you know if that made it? It looks like it will. Good. Okay, good. Are there any other comments, or um, I just wanted to tell you, the committee that we had a 90% completion report on the engineering survey for the Jason Russell House, and it's very, very good news. The bowing of that wall on the mass outside turns out to be uh, insect damage to a wooden wall and not the stone foundation below. Um, we have some. Very detailed drawings from Patrick Guthrie, the architect who supervised the project, and it lays out what needs to be done year by year over the next 10 years to preserve the Jason Russell House. So I think um, we're going to be able to show you the engineering survey uh, being done in the next month or so, and then we have some work identified to preserve the Jason Russell House that will involve rebuilding that. Uh, north wall and uh, putting the gutters back up on the house. I'd also yeah. say all of that project that turned a million dollar project into a hundred thousand dollar project. Yes. And it was very good news. Yes. And I'd also say that because we were able to complete the 90% review on the project with uh, special invited guests from the Massachusetts Historical Commission who gave us very, very positive feedback on it. We, we think we have enough time to apply for what, what's called a, a development grant, but it's more construction work, so that we think we can get the Massachusetts Historical Commission to provide money that will allow us to do what, what I would call the top two or three near-term things that need to be done, including the wood structures for the Boeing. So that, that proposal application is, is due March 24th. So, you know, we have three weeks 
but we've learned a lot in the last year. So I'm, I'm optimistic we're going to get a grant application put in and, and more matching funds from the state, which is, which is what we're trying to do is, is leverage what we have from the Community Preservation Act. Just as a reminder, that engineering, engineering survey was 15000 from CPA and 15000 from Mass Historic. So we're getting money from the state to do this already. And we're looking for more, as Paul said. And we're really pleased that they go after the grants. Because really, there's no grant writer that we have on staff in the town to go after this kind of grant. So it's the volunteers that are making the, the money um, double. And we really appreciate their help. Okay. That's great. Um, are there any other questions from the committee, comments on the project that's, or the proposal that's been put before you? Okay, so uh, you're going to vote on the 24th. That's a Friday. You mean on Fridays? No. <laughs> we don't. Wait a minute. I'm one of the only ones who still have a little. <laughs> <laughs> the 14th. 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 Uh, Friday, Friday, Friday. Oh, it's the I'm sorry, Thursday? It's Thursday. Tuesday. 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 Yeah. Okay, so March 14th. Okay. Um, do you anticipate that when you vote on March 14th that it's going to be substantially what you presented to us? Yes, I do. Uh, yes, I do. I think it will be 100% what we've, um, we've presented to you. We were trying to be respectful both to you and capital planning. Okay. And maybe next time we'll just take the vote. But that's what, you know, we're supposed to do, do this in con concentration. Yeah. No, I understand. Yeah. Okay. John? Um, can I move that we support this um, in, in its current state and that the CPA committee can inform us if there's any substantial changes? Okay. I'm sorry, John. I said I, I move that we, we vote positive uh, favorable action on this today and the CPA committee can come back and give us any uh, negative feedback if there's a change after uh, you know at the time of their final vote. Is there a second to that motion? Second. second. Okay, discussion. Okay, uh, motion is favorable action to support the recommendations of the Community Preservation Act Committee uh, and that uh, uh, if there's any changes that you'll let us know about that. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Is there any other discussion? Grant? Um, how would we sort of address the Concord Lincoln uh, paying their share? Oh, that, that's, oh, that's a separate article. thing. No, okay, sorry. Okay. Right. Very good. Okay, so it's moved and seconded for favorable action on Article 49. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you so much. We're really appreciative. Thank you. Yeah, that was easy Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I've already got a text message from Eric saying, how did it go? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think next year it, it might be nice, it, or it might be great if you have like one page that just gives us the status of like these projects. Okay, sure. It'd be helpful. Yeah, I think that would be great for the first six. Oh. I think that would be great. <laughs> I'd like to thank all of you for your work and yeah, really appreciate it. I have a wonderful committee. I did most of the talking, but that's not usually the case. They're really outspoken about what they believe in, which is very helpful. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you. Exactly. Sorry, we'll try to get more okay. chairs. Good to see you. Thank you. Next time. Look at the capital planning. Yeah. How about capital planning? I'm going to take care of Okay, that's good. Somebody see somebody then. <laughs> Now, um, let's do scenic byways since we heard that earlier today. Uh, they're requesting $2,000. Um, and I guess I would suggest 
that if the committee is favorably disposed towards this, that we um, authorize or appropriate $2,000 uh, to be spent under the, if you look at the wording, provided, however, uh, that these monies shall, uh, I'll have to figure out the wording, but these monies shall not be spent uh, without uh, concurrent uh, payments by the other four, the other three towns. Appropriation by uh, I suppose they could take it from there. Okay. Is this an article? I'm sorry? Is this an article or are there committees and commissions? No, this would be in the, uh, it's Article 45, it's the commissions and committees. <laughs> so we'll, uh, I'll make up some more to you and basically says provided however uh, the expenditure is specifically contingent upon contributions by the other three towns. Boy, Lexington's got a lot of nerve. They've got a budget literally twice our size. Well, so they're supporting it. Carter. Yeah. Uh, okay, so is there a motion? Second. Okay, so the motion's been made and seconded for the appropriation of $2,000 to the bylaw, uh, scenic bylaw committee, uh, contingent upon the contributions from the other uh, three towns. Any other, dis any discussion? All the, oh, sorry, Alan. Am I missing it? Is, is it in Article 45? Is that the I keep messing up this article. Yeah, Article 45 is Appropriation Committees and Commissions. Yeah, but I mean, does it need to be listed? Uh, well, the last line says any other committees or commissions. Okay. Okay, any other questions? No. All those in favor of the appropriation of $2,000 with the appropriate contingency? Uh, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Physical action. Yes. Okay. We've got a half hour. Who has budgets? Paul? I assume this is the inspections? Yes. highlight first off of how their revenue is going um, it uh, their FY 2016 actual revenue ended up taking a big jump FY 15 was 1.3 million and FY 16 was 1.7 million um, their the, the current estimate for uh, fiscal 17 is will be 1.65 million so the 1.65 million for 2017 is the estimated revenue um, so they they continue to see a very robust uh, construction industry going on in in arlington right now um, and they uh, are estimating the same 1.65 million for fiscal 2018. Uh, the um, biggest issue coming up is has to do with the articles of 11 through 14 in this year's annual town meeting, the, the bylaw changes proposed by the 
um, it's the residential study group um, and, and these are interestingly enough these are regular bylaws not zoning bylaws they're the bylaws on um, construction excavation demolition activity uh, regulations uh, and because of that bylaw They've been working on, I guess a whole committee has been working on a, a document they're putting together, which once it all gets approved, <coughs> will require uh, builders to uh, fill out a, a, a new agreement and um, <coughs> that has uh, listed all the uh, things that are implied by these, these four articles. Um, in terms of what they have to do with building materials and dumpsters and excavation and demolition and Noise. and the how much they have to inform the neighbors in the area of about what's going on mm -hmm. and so um, because of what they see as additional work and because actually of pushing from uh, the manager on the director of inspections is they are requesting an additional building inspector starting this coming fiscal year so in looking at their um, budget that's what the big jump is 20% um, in the salaries and wages is adding a uh, an, another local building inspector um, um, Mike Byrne the director says that uh, because of all the work he hasn't taken a vacation in a number of years um, and uh, we encouraged him to uh, to indeed take a vacation um, but by April 30th <laughs> 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 otherwise it goes away uh, yeah, that's right. he, he was um, mentioning the regret of, uh, of the April 30th date um, uh, so uh, the other thing we discussed with him was that, that, that while he's increasing the, the salaries and wages are going up on the first line, it, uh, as the budget as printed here is um, eliminating the uh, temp money that he has in here. And that money has been used in the past um, to cover some of these, um, uh, some of the work that, that he and the building inspectors have not been able to do because they just don't have the time. They've been able to bring in a experienced and certified inspector to fill in. Um, however, the, he also has used temp uh, to uh, cover vacations um, and out and people being out, including the. Um, uh, the assistant who mans the desk and the wiring and plumbing inspectors and we believed Daryl and I in talking with them that um, he will in fact still need some amount of money for temp workers and um, we would like to therefore uh, amend what is in the book by adding back uh, $4,000 for uh, salaries and wages temp on line 5102. And with that change, the total inspection salaries comes out to be 480,066. And the inspection total then is 492. 066 and that's what we are recommending to the committee okay now this is because of the proposed new bylaws right and and just the level of um, work that I guess sorry to interrupt I just need to know what time will this be concluding about 10 10 5 something 10 like 05. that okay very that'd be okay there's a large crane a 500,000 pound transformer coming down Mystic Street and a lot of those cars are going to have to be moved. Yeah. So it's okay for now, but if we have to, I'll let you know, and then we can move the cars. 
Yeah. We'll be out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, Tom, they can do it now. Right? <laughs> okay, so what happens if these bylaws don't pass? Um, uh, we, we, we didn't discuss that. I guess we should discuss that with the manager if we want to um, back this out or make it contingent on the, um, the bylaws passing. Okay, questions? Uh, Dick. On um, expenses, 5241 and 5260, what are those? Uniform badges and gloves, clean cloth train. Um, I, I assume that it's just the, uh, when, when the inspectors go on site and, uh, and actually do an inspection that they will have, um, cert certainly for 5260, they'll have cleaning expenses from time to time because of how they have to uh, get in there. Um, as far as uniforms, badging, and gloves, I, I don't know specifically, but I assume. Uh, Charlie? Yeah, certain of the unions in town have negotiated um, a uniform badge and gloves uh, subsidy years. Okay. I forget the exact the right word, but it's a supplemental uh, income. And it's, so it's part of the union agreement, and it shows up in different departments because those people are in the union, even though it may not be directly apropos. Right. It's actually it's an old term, uniform and gloves. The gloves at one time used to be the white gloves for police officers <laughs> in the traffic. Yeah. So they've kind of kept this term, and, and basically now it is. Like Charlie pointed out, in the in the union contracts, they have a clothing allowance, uniform allowance, and they, they, they also now they have identification bad, badges. So if you're the wire inspector and you go to someone's <coughs> piece of property, they 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 have an identification. That, that's what they, that means the badge, uh -huh. and that's what it is. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Unanimous? Should we adjourn? So, 492066. Uh, I'll tell you what, since. Uh, so just a quick question. So, I should inform both Sandy Pooler and the comptroller about the change that we're proposing here? Probably if you inform Sandy uh, and ask him to inform, do it however way you wish. Okay. But if we make any changes from the book, we need to keep those two officials in, uh, in mind. Now, also, I appreciate asking Sandy, what happens if these bylaws don't pass? Do we still need this okay. you know, additional person? Um, OK, uh, the next meeting is on uh, Monday. It is on Minuteman. Uh, any further business? Okay, meeting adjourned. Thank you.